Hi, I'm here with Sipa Moyo, uh, Africa Head for the One Campaign uh, uh, Development Advocacy Group at the AFDB conference in Abidjan, Ivory Coast. Thanks for giving me your time, Sipo. Um, first question I'd like to ask you is how you see the uh, AFDB's role in achieving development goals. What is it, what is it there for? Um, how is its rep what is its record over the last couple of years? And what do you think it needs to achieve in the next five to ten years? Thank you so much for having me on your um, show. Uh, the African Development Bank, as you probably are aware, is the premier development uh, finance institution on the continent and for the continent. Uh, and I think it has played a really huge role, particularly in the area of infrastructure. And infrastructure really just happens to be the backbone of economic transformation. So we're talking about infrastructure across the sectors, you know, health infrastructure, education infrastructure, agriculture infrastructure, very important water and sanitation infrastructure. So the, the ADB has actually played a really important role in terms of really developing the infrastructure and of course roads and connectivity. Uh, those are all really key areas in terms of creating a backbone for, inter for uh, economic um, transformation. Um, and it, you know, it's, it is, without the infrastructure, uh, you really can't eradicate malaria, for example, because you know you're going to be treating people underneath a tree. You know, so I think the role that the ADB has played has been really crucial. And I think going forward, uh, the ADB has an even more important role to 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 to, to play in order to consolidate, you know, uh, the gains and the achievements that it has made. And in my view, a uh, part of that, uh, you know, uh, consolidation will require uh, really. Uh, sort of building the infrastructure. We've done the infrastructure, we need to do more infrastructure. But I think investing in agriculture in a really serious way from technical aspects to fertilizer and, and inputs um, and changing the lives of those people that really uh, feed the continent. 70% of Africans rely on agriculture for their livelihood. And you're not going to end poverty unless you start with that 70%. They're the same 70% that don't have access to clean water and sanitation. The same 70% who are feeding all of us but can rarely, barely sustain themselves, cannot give their children a good education or good health care and so on. So I think that's a really important place to start is begin to invest in agriculture in terms of modernizing agriculture in Africa. That's very important. Uh, um, in terms of uh, building or developing the value chain so that it's not still just the jobs on the dirt. It's also about, you know, the transformation of agriculture produce, you know, whether it's uh, canning and juicing and drying and so on, but transforming agriculture produce really so that you're doing a lot better, getting a lot more income for the people that are producing in agriculture, but allowing other people, because we get it, not everybody wants to be a farmer, but there's a lot of young people who would actually be interested in agribusiness. You know, they don't want to be farmers, but they get agribusiness because at the end of the, of the day, it's really about the money that they get from that. So we think that's really important. And, you know, ultimately, you know, as you get better, you know, as you develop the value chain, it means that there's better, you know, tax revenue for the government uh, and ultimately you transform the economy. So the government needs to really put, governments need to put their skin in the game. Uh, so that they can attract private sector participation uh, and so that you can have more young people really engaging in agriculture. The other thing I think which the ADB needs to look into going forward is a much stronger and robust engagement with civil society. I think that's really key. We've entered this interesting era of what I call shared governance. Uh, shared governance because what you will find that in a lot of countries, citizens no longer just have expectations from government. They expect something from the private sector, from the opposition parties, from the civil society organizations. So there's a role really and an opportunity to work together. Everyone has a role to play in terms of transforming the African economies. And finally, one thing that the ADB, I think, uh, will have to play a leadership role in terms of encouraging the countries as well to make progress in that area, it's in the area of empowering women and girls. Uh, you know, we, you cannot hope to transform or develop an economy or society by leaving half of that society behind. So empowering women and girls very simply means not letting our women die while giving birth. Uh, a woman in Africa is 100 times more likely to die while, to die while giving birth than a woman in Europe. Uh, you know, 
investing in women and girls means letting girls stay in school. Because right now, those who are lucky enough to be in school, you know, spend half the day fetching water or firewood and so on. And that talks to infrastructure again in energy and water and so on. So when we talk about empowering women and girls, you know, sometimes people have the idea that we're talking about some kind of a revolution. But actually what we're talking about is just the basic things, enabling them to have the equal, you know, the same opportunities and boys and girls. And guess what? The most important thing about investing in women and girls is that the social return of investing in women and girls actually accrues to all of society, boys and men, and not just to the women and girls. How would you assess the uh, performance of commercial banks in Africa in, in furthering development goals? Are they doing enough? Are they lending to the right people? Are they supporting the right projects? You know, what more could they do to, to meet those goals? So commercial banks are a little bit of a different ball game. Uh, and the challenge with commercial banks to a large extent is really the interest rates. Interest rates uh, tend to be uh, really punitive in Africa, and that's a big challenge. But you'll find that a lot of commercial banks are stepping up to the development plate in the sense that they are putting aside funds for you know small and medium scale uh, projects and uh, you know development and so on so they are stepping up to the plate there's a lot of public private partnerships again they are joining into those kinds of uh, uh, partnerships and being part of that um, a lot of them are doing quite a bit of uh, um, uh, you know, corporate uh, citizenship and, you know, um, just being able to provide social services in the communities where they operate and make their money in, uh, you know, as good corporate citizens. Uh, but there is still a challenge with the, with the private uh, commercial banks because the cost of money and the cost of borrowing can sometimes be prohibitive. Uh, but what I'm really heartened by is that I see a lot of them really beginning to take more interest and even become more innovative in their financing models and their financing instruments uh, towards development. And, and briefly, you have a report on uh, development financing out tomorrow. Uh, why don't you just give us a flavour of what that will contain, what are the key things you've pointed, you've, uh, pointed out in that report? Fantastic, thank you so much. The, final, the uh, data report that we're launching tomorrow is really about um, you know, what's going to happen at what are we asking for at the next Financing for Development Conference, which is taking place in Addis Ababa next month, in, um, uh, in August. And r briefly and quickly, what we're asking for, first of all, you need the political presence. You know, the leaders need to be there. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is we're asking for a social package, you know, that really targets the poorest people of the, in the, in, on the continent, particularly women and girls. So you need a social protection package that includes health, that includes education, that includes water and sanitation, that includes uh, in energy, you know, and so on. And I've talked a little bit already about the challenges that women and girls face. Thirdly, we're we're asking for the development uh, partners, in other words, the ODA countries, to provide 50% of their ODA, to put that in the least developed countries, because that's where the greatest need is. That's where a woman is more likely to die in childbirth than in a middle income country. Uh, that's where a girl is more likely to not be in school because her parents would rather send the boy to school. So 50% of ODA, we're asking for that to go to LDCs. Currently, or last year, the LDC investment, uh, o the ODA investment in LDCs is at 30%. And if they had actually met that 50% goal we're asking for, another, an additional $26 billion would have been available for development. So that's another thing we're asking for. The third thing we're asking for is domestic resource mobilization. Charity begins at home. We're asking for the African countries to really focus on closing the tax GDP uh, uh, ratio gap um, so that you know they are raising more taxes uh, from do, you know from domestic resources, and that means managing natural resources or governing much natural resources much better. Uh, you know, uh, uh, keeping an eye and really sort of cracking down on illicit financial flows uh, and all of those kinds of things. So domestic resource mobilization, 50% of ODA going to least developing countries, developed countries, focusing on women and girls, um, and the leaders just actually being there to make sure that this happens. Perfect. Stephen Moyo, thank you very much for your time.